And a champion is someone who gets up, even when he can't, even when they can't. A true champion is one who sweats from exhaustion when no one is watching. The second participant tonight epitomizes those very words. He has a big heart and is a multifaceted human being with a vast array of strengths that go beyond his superhero accomplishments. His humanity and down-to-earth nature are examples of what makes him not only legendary as a pro wrestler, but a legendary human being. He was born practically on a wrestling mat, just by the virtue of being from Perry, Oklahoma. But he was born in North Dakota. He always strived for the best through sheer will and dedication and never simply filled a quota. His efforts are applauded by global audience from Sarasota to Minnesota. Perry is a town of 5,000 people that is primarily known for being the best at wrestling, and that is a fact. Regardless of which era or team in that town, one thing is for sure, they were always stacked, and the schools were packed, and they made quite the impact. If you faced them on the mat, it was the equivalent of getting whacked by a Joe Pesci character that was quick to react. Perry produced two Olympic medalists. The first, Jack Von Beber, won a gold medal at the 1932 Games. And the icon himself, the one and only, Danny Hodge, whose impact in his sport surpasses them all, even LeBron James. When our next participant was four years old, he moved to Perry and grew up two blocks away from Hodge, which for many aspiring wrestlers was something to behold only in dreams. He trained with his grandsons and was on a few of those Perry High School Championship teams. Wrestling was always his first love as he devoured any form of the sport he can get his hands on since he was five. He idolized his two older cousins who went to the national championships. There is no doubt that in his blood, he was always, always indeed a man who had drive and always wanted to thrive, not merely survive. Even his two sisters would wrestle him at age 10 when the YMCA got it started. He started playing flag football. So while other kids were going to the mall, sports were above all. And in the fifth grade, he started playing tackle football. In high school, so dominant were the Perry Maroons that it was similar to the reign of the Yankees or Real Madrid. They made their opponents look like beginners. They became hated, jeered, and booed because they were triumphant, one-of-a-kind, unapologetic winners. Despite being a small school, they hold 56 state championships. In our country, that is the most of any school. Yes, their program, which produced top-of-the-line talent, was definitely a crown jewel. The school was small as he graduated with 97 other classmates. This definitely indicates, if not demonstrates, that despite geographical location, there are dreams and giants in all of the United States. What will open up these gates? Endless dedication and work, rather than those that give in to dire straits. Out of the 14 different weight classes, Perry would put 13 in the finals. And in his senior year, Oklahoma, he set the school record for most pins, 30 in a season by a heavy weight. His passion and work ethic would dictate his fate as he was recruited by the University of Oklahoma to be a defensive tackle and heavyweight wrestler. Let that marinate as he would continue to dominate and never fluctuate. One need not investigate to realize that this was a once in a generation talent that was mighty great. In 2001, he was one of three defensive tackles that they were bringing in as part of their recruiting class. The first time he ran out on the field at OU, where under one foot you can feel the cool grass, along with 80,000 Oklahomans cheering on the sheer mess, not to mention Julius Pepper in his senior season, it was a foregone conclusion that they were going to kick some ass. While still juggling a business finance major, he was playing two sports that in terms of conditioning were quite different, which was obviously tough. But this is a man that never screams uncle or says it's enough. He's built to handle any challenge, even when it's rough. Three years into his college football playing career, they just beat Washington State in the 2003 Rose Bowl. And as juniors becoming seniors and await their fates, he received a call from the wrestling coach, Jack Spates. Are we having fun? I'm having fun. They need a heavyweight. And no, they had no backups, which was great because he was anxious to get back on the mat. He had wrestled since he was five, so he couldn't stay from it too long as it was his natural habitat. He trusted his coaches and he wanted to see how far he could go with wrestling, which in his case, the sky was truly the limit. Any competitor brave enough to face him would be defeated many a times, sometimes in under a minute. He was in a class all of his own and being surrounded by greatness from two sports, let's name some of his incredible contemporaries. The defensive tackle position, which was stacked, names such as Tommy Harris, Corey Klein, Barry Holly Men, future MMA stars such as King Mo, Phil Davis, C.B. Dalloway, Gregor Gajalipski, and Cress Wheel Weedman. As a two-time All-American who qualified for the NCAA Division I Championship, the man could not fail. As nothing could curtail his fate, even in his last semester, which was mentally draining, focusing on every detail, such as the job interview thing that we all have. But soon he would exhale and prevail as he had a job lined up in finance in a firm in Dallas until he received something in the mail. He called the firm and informed them that spandex and oil were going to be his new attire. Even before college, Jim Ross and Gerald Briscoe witnessed his desire and fire to aspire. What about his dad? What about his dad? 
Upon hearing this, his dad's jaw dropped, but his body of work only begins to illustrate why he is the best. The man is beyond versatile, all for substance and style. Some might call it a swagger. He's a multidimensional as a comic book. The comic book that I think of is Cloak and Dagger. He constantly progressed. His future was definitely so bright he had to wear shades, whether it was his grades or many trades. Let me run down his impressive accolades. Lucha Underground Champ, FCW Heavyweight Champ, ECW Heavyweight Champ, WWE United States Champ, Money in the Bank winner, and in 2010, the WWE Heavyweight Champion of the World, AEW Dynamite Award, not once but twice. I can read his vast array of accomplishments until I'm gray. But how about retiring with an undefeated record in MMA? From training weekdays at Yabar City Jiu-Jitsu Club under the tutelage of former UFC and Bellator fighter Josh Rafferty, you knew that his opponents would eventually break. So as I bid these rhymes adieu, for goodness sake, Put your hands together for a kind, talented, amazing human being. Last name Hager. First name Jake. Welcome, Jake, to the celebrity wow. tournament, my friend. Uh, I had to write this one down because I love this question so much. Um, I believe adversity is a gift. Everyone is going through something. So be nice to everyone because you don't understand. You don't know what they're going through. Um, when you experience adversity in life in the present moment, it's tough. Absolutely. Whether you're paying the bills, uh, making the deadline, something personal with your family, or just having a, a shitty day. Um, in the tougher moments, it can be overwhelming. It can be hard to see a way out of it. It can be difficult to see the finish line, even though you could be very close to it. Um, very close to a solution. I believe life is all about the journey, not the destination. I believe we live in a largely unconscious society where everyone focuses on where they want to be instead of where they are presently. What I mean by unconscious is that people let their mind create this reality in their head. They let their ego use their past pain or future expectations. Um, or future fears to control their thoughts and more importantly, their behaviors. The future in your head is just a figment of your own imagination. The only thing that is real is the present moment. And it's very tough to be present. It's very tough to um, acknowledge where you are currently. Um, and yet so many people let these ex expectations uh, dictate their behavior because they are unconscious and they're not being aware that they're being controlled. Uh, when I started fighting, one of my famous, um, one of my favorite quotes uh, is by Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee famously said that it's like a finger pointing away to the moon. Don't concentrate on the finger. Otherwise, you'll miss out on all the heavenly glory. In the journey, we learn how to respond, how to adapt, how to over overcome. Through mistakes, we learn how to correct them. Through defeat and failure, we learn how to win, how to succeed. In the journey of life, we always will have adversity. But these are precious moments, and we have to look at them as precious. Because in these precious moments, we learn how to respond. We learn about ourselves. We learn that no matter what throws at us, and knocks us down, that we have the courage, we have the ability to get back up, and more importantly, we have the ability to respond. Um, that's really important to me. It really um, hits me deep within my heart. Um, if you know that no matter how much adversity that you go through, you respond and respond quickly, you will go far. There's no magic formula to, be, to becoming resilient. Um, to becoming mentally tough. Um, I had a great wrestling coach in high school. He was a three-time All-American at the University of Nebraska. So uh, my wrestling coach was not your wrestling coach. And uh, he he had this famous saying, he, he would always tell us after a hard loss, a hard practice, or you know when we were defeated, which wasn't very often, that he wished that he could just sprinkle some dust on us and make us tough. But that's, that's not how it works. You got to go through it. You got to earn that shit. And so um, that type of mentality, those type of moments have always uh, stuck with me as um, Avi so greatly said in the intro that 
Perry, Oklahoma is the wrestling capital of the world. No other high school has more state championships than us in any other sport, at any other size, in any other level. Football, wrestling, basketball, we have the most. So um, it, it really is special and I feel blessed to have grown up there. Um, so you learn adversity, you know, you learn strength through adversity pretty much. With all that being said, uh, my moment was in 2017 in the world of professional wrestling. There's been no competition. There's been no other company was really able to compete and offer professional wrestlers the same type of benefits, the same type of uh, income and the same type of lucrative uh, appearances, I guess. And so it's a big deal to wrestle for the WWE. Um, I'm very grateful for my career there. I was there nine years uh, wrestling over 200 days a year um, all over the world. Um, I'm, from, I'm a kid from a small town in Oklahoma. So this is all I wanted was to see the world and travel. And so it was great. Um, I feel very, very blessed to have that career that I have with them. Um, but in the professional wrestling world, uh, my salary became a prison. I had not a lot of other options to go to, to, um, I, I guess, to go to the next level. And so whatever uh, the, the Federation uh, classified my value as, I was kind of stuck with that. And I wasn't okay with that. I had been there nine years, traveling 200 days a year, and it was time for something to change. My contract negotiations, it just failed. I knew my value and I was not happy with their offer. I decided taking the easy way no longer was an option. I was, I felt unfulfilled. I felt like I wasn't creating. Uh, we're fighters, but at the same time, we're all artists. We're creating, we're performing, and we are delivering an emotion to an art, to our audience. And when you're not given that ability to do that, it just becomes physical. It, it becomes unfulfilling and. I really felt like after nine years there, that's where I was. And so I didn't want to take the, the easy road anymore. I didn't want to just take the salary and the value that they were giving me. So I told them that I wanted my release and that I wanted to leave the company. And as a pro wrestler, there's not a whole lot to do, but I had a good friend of mine who uh, told me whatever I do next, you have to use your career at WWE to and your exposure at it uh, for whatever you do next to make it better. And I thought about that for a long time. What could I do to maximize my value while using my fame as a pro wrestler? I was a two-time state wrestling champion in Oklahoma. I went on to play football and wrestle at the University of Oklahoma. I was an All-American wrestler very confident in my wrestling abilities. A good friend of mine was a, uh, an, a fighter at the UFC and he's a, he was a coach currently at the time. And honestly, I feel like this guy saved my life. He really helped me throughout my journey. I decided to um, go into professional mixed martial, mixed martial arts, with no background, no amateur fights. And I, um, Man, I could, this journey has really been monumental to me. I can remember how hard I puked in that first practice. Before I started training, I was drinking every day. I was smoking cigarettes like they were running away from me. I was not living healthy. That all stopped after that first puke. You know, it was like a, pers a, a porcelain wake up call. Um, and so I told WWE that uh, I wasn't going to resign with them and I was going to leave with them. And so what did that mean? Um, I had to prepare for the next income to substitute that, which in pro wrestling, there's not a lot of other options. Um, at, the, at the time, pro wrestling is very popular. So there's a lot of independent uh, circuits I can do on the weekend. 
So I would wrestle those shows on the weekend. And then during the week, I'd, I'd practice every day, sometimes twice a day. Somehow I would find time to be present with my kids. It was fucking overwhelming. I'm not going to lie. I was good at wrestling, but I hadn't competed in nine years. I never boxed before. I had never done jujitsu before. I'd never kickboxed before. I was so inflexible that I couldn't even throw a fucking leg kick. It was, it was really like, oh, what are we doing here, guys, at, at times? And um, at the same time, every weekend, I was going to wrestle these pro wrestling shows to like pay the bills and pay for the school. And um, it was uncertain and terrifying, uh, but it had giant potential. In the end of it, um, I, uh, like this is most of 2017. Um, I got signed with Bellator MMA at the end of 2017. Um, I trained for 2018, all of it. It was one of the toughest years of my life. I was just bouncing back from different wrestling promotions from uh, UK or LA and just trying to make ends meet while at the same time trying to find time to find um, and a time to learn all these different disciplines. And luckily, um, I had a great family around me, uh, my wife, my teammates, my coaches. I really leaned on them to um, get through this. And I definitely, definitely could not have got through this without having their support. And so it's really important. And um, uh, I had, at the end of 2018, uh, Bellator announced the first fight, which was going to be in Los Angeles at the Forum, the home of Magic Johnson, um, in January of 2019. And it was just like a surreal moment. And then at the same time, um, I'm trying to pay the bills by um, uh, wrestling independent on the weekends at these small shows. And I had a whole month of shows just get canceled, canceled out of nowhere. And this is what I'm counting on so I can continue training and uh, trying to achieve this goal. Um, I ended up having to take out a loan, like a home equity loan on my house. Um, it ended up being a silver lining. It ended up paying for my whole training camp so I, I wouldn't have to wrestle anymore. But at the time, it was it was certainly a lot. I ended up winning uh, my first three fights. I'm undefeated in MMA. And the moral of the story is I left one company because I believed in myself. And I ended up signing with a brand new company that didn't even exist when I started this journey um, in 2019. And I debuted on their first episode um, because of this journey. And I didn't know where this journey was going to take me. I just knew that it was going to take me to the right spot. And I, I'm sorry for this long winded, but uh, it was very cool to like go through this because it was like two and two years and nine months. And so like after I've gone through this, I'm, I'm pretty confident that I can survive almost anything.